They said it was lifeless. They were wrong. Earth, ravaged and overpopulated, clings desperately to hope. Titan, Saturn's mysterious moon, beckons with the promise of salvation. Join Captain Rick Jansen, a soldier transformed into more than man, as he leads a daring mission to unlock the secrets of Titan and secure humanity's future. The film begins with numerous cars traveling beside an ocean towards an army operating secret base. On the news, it's said that a nuclear war has started and going to destroy the entire planet soon. A man describes the base as a safe place with everything needed for life. Rick and his family arrive at a grand mansion. Dr. Freya, a woman working there, welcomes the family of three into the mansion, which is now their new home. Rick, his wife, Dr. Abigail, and their son, Lucas, are amazed by the mansion's luxury. The whole family stands by their swimming pool. Lucas asks Rick where he's going, looking at the stars. Rick points towards the sky, explaining that you need a telescope to see that, but it is somewhere up in there. The next morning, while the whole family is unpacking, Professor Martin Collingwood pays them a visit. The couple is delighted to see him. Rick expresses gratitude to the professor for choosing him for the mission. Then, the professor thanks Abby for agreeing to the mission, to which she responds that it's all for the future of their son. They also mention that Rick is ideal for the mission because he once survived in a desert without water or food for three to four days, proving he can handle tough situations. The next scene takes place in a conference where the professor addresses a group. He says that Earth's natural resources have been exhausted due to a rapid increase in population. People are fighting over what little resources remain. The professor predicts that in 10 years, half of the planet will be uninhabitable, and in 15 years, half of the world's current population will die from starvation. However, amidst these challenges, he offers a ray of hope. Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, it's the only other celestial body in our solar system, besides Earth, to have an atmosphere, making it the most potentially habitable place apart from our home planet. However, conditions on Titan are still incredibly harsh, with no ordinary human able to survive there. The atmosphere is mainly nitrogen, around 95, and there are liquid methane rains with extremely low temperatures. The professor acknowledges that according to space science, Titan isn't suitable for human life. However, he proposes a different approach. Instead of trying to make Titan hospitable for humans, he suggests using modern genetics to adapt people to the planet's environment. As a result, Rick and others present there have been selected to undergo experiments to make them capable of surviving on Titan. One of the participants raises concerns about the safety of the mission questioning the potential consequences of forced evolution. The professor reassures them, stating that they are essentially creating a superior species, akin to making them superhumans. Despite the known risks of the experiment, everyone present is willing to put their lives on the line for the sake of future generations. After the conference, the group receives their key cards and is escorted to a laboratory. Dr. Freya, the assistant for the experiment, administers a shot to Rick and explains that he will receive over 300 shots in the next week. These shots consist of enzyme blockers, synthetic polymers, and more intended to help him survive in the five oxygen of Titan's atmosphere. Later, back at their mansions, all volunteers and their families are settled into luxurious homes next to each other. Abigail decides to host a barbecue weekend and invites everyone over. They dance, eat, and drink together, knowing that this will be the last time they can enjoy alcohol before the experiment begins. After the party, Abigail becomes drunk, so Rick helps her to their room. However, before they can reach it, Rick starts coughing aggressively and struggles to breathe. Abigail assists him to bed, gives him some medicine, and tucks him in. In the next experiment, the volunteers are submerged underwater to test their endurance. Rick and a girl named Tally are inside. Holding their breath, they manage to stay underwater for 31 minutes, surprising everyone outside with the success of the experiments. After a while, Tally starts to suffocate and surfaces after 39 minutes, but Rick remains underwater. He removes the vital signs monitoring device from his chest and begins swimming rapidly across the pool. Everyone cheers and applauds as he remains underwater for 42 minutes. Later that night, Rick shares with his son Lucas about the conditions on Titan. Rick then joins his wife in the swimming pool, where she notices his prominent veins on his back. Although it could be a side effect of the shots, she decides not to mention it to Rick. In the morning, Rayanne, the wife of another volunteer, confides in Abigail, expressing her fear about the mission. She tells her that she didn't want her husband to come here, but he doesn't listen to anything she says. In the following scene, Rick has surgery. Abigail reads the book they were given, which contains all the procedures Rick has to go through. She sees that they're all safe, with some side effects that won't harm his life too much, so she feels relieved. Later at night, Abigail wakes up and finds Rick missing from their bed, and the mansion feels very cold.
She adjusts the temperature and finds Rick in the kitchen, putting ice on his body. He explains he felt very hot in bed. Abigail gets a bucket of ice, and Rick puts his hands in it. He asks her to do the same, but she takes her hands out because of the cold. Rick then says he can't feel any cold while his hands are in the water, showing he's adapted to Titan's low temperatures. In one experiment, the group swims underwater in a liquid methane-filled environment. Then, they're asked to run around a field while breathing from gas cylinders with changed composition. They repeat these exercises for several days. While in the changing room, Rick notices a lot of his hair falling out. Suddenly, one of the female volunteers vomits blood and collapses. The others rush to help and call for assistance. Despite Dr. Freya's efforts, the volunteer dies. The group is shocked as they realize the harsh reality of the experiment, and they immediately subscribe to this channel that night. Everyone gathers at Rick's home to discuss the incident. Abigail observes that the veins of all the volunteers become prominent for a few seconds before disappearing. Meanwhile, Rayanne and her husband are outside in the pool. Her husband begins to panic and strikes Rayanne on her face, losing control. The others rush to help the girl and restrain the man, who is not handling the experiments well mentally. The next day, Dr. Freya visits Rick's home to check his vitals. She explains that the girl who died had kidney stones, which affected the experiments and led to her death. That night, Rick starts vomiting blood. Abigail takes a sample of his vomitus to investigate. She notices a blinking light from the wall devices of her home and realizes they are being watched. Meanwhile, Rick is in the swimming pool when his skin begins to peel off and float. Later, while they sleep, Abigail notices that Rick's back has also peeled. Abigail takes the blood sample to the lab the next morning and discovers something living inside it that the book didn't mention. The lab performs eye surgery on Rick that day, aiming to enhance his ability to see in darkness by widening the aperture of his pupils. He returns home with bandages over his eyes. Later that night, Rick's eyes start bleeding profusely and they rush back to the hospital. Abigail confronts the professor, accusing him of withholding information about the procedure. She also mentions the cameras, but he insists they are for security purposes and sends her home. Upon arriving, Abigail sees large army vans at Rayanne's home. When she tries to investigate, a soldier stops her. Suddenly, her husband throws Rayanne out of the window, and her lifeless body lies on the porch. Rayanne's husband has changed physically with wings on his body, and also he has lost his control altogether due to experiments. As a result, the army personnel shoot him dead on the spot. Another night, Abigail takes Rick's key card and secretly enters the facility. She finds the volunteers' medical files and examines them. To her shock, she discovers that they are being transformed into a new species called Homo Titans, resembling animals. Meanwhile, the professor and his team are in a meeting with NASA. He is criticized for conducting forced evolutionary experiments without proper evidence or ethical justification. When the professor visits Rick at his home, he admits to Abigail that he doesn't fully understand the effects of the experiments yet. He explains that the eye treatment was a miscalculation and needs correction through another surgery, or Rick could lose control of his emotions and die within 48 hours. He also confesses that the evolutionary process is complex and they are unsure how Rick will evolve after the full experiment. Abigail, furious with him, storms out in anger. Later, Rick removes the bandage from his eyes and is astonished to see clearly, even in the dark. He contacts the professor and expresses his readiness to complete the experiment. The next day, a crucial surgery is performed on the subjects, resulting in the deaths of all except Rick and Tally, who somehow survived. However, both have transformed into a new species, bearing no resemblance to humans in skin color, facial features, or body shape. Abigail is brought to the facility after the surgery and is shocked to see her husband transformed into a completely different creature. Despite their physical changes, it's evident that Rick still remembers them. They have become homo titans, capable of understanding human speech, but unable to communicate verbally due to their low-frequency communication, also detectable through tactile sensations. That night, Rick accidentally hits Abigail while she's helping him put on a jacket, which deeply saddens and scares her. Later, while swimming, Tally has arrived to visit Rick, accompanied by several guards. It's revealed that Tally has killed her husband. Tally and Rick attempt to communicate using their tactile sensations. The soldiers sedate Tally, but when she retaliates, they shoot her dead. They try to apprehend Rick, but he defeats them with his newfound power. He stops only when Abigail intervenes, but then he flees from the mansion. Abigail ensures Lucas's safety and then follows Rick, knowing where he might be. She finds him at a mountain cliff, a place he used to take her when he was human. 
They communicate through touch, but their moment is interrupted by the arrival of army personnel. In the next scene, Abigail wakes up in the hospital. The professor is there and asks for her last assistance. He takes her to where Rick is being held in a glass cell. Now ready to be sent to Titan, Rick's emotional bond with Abigail and Lucas prevents him from proceeding. The professor asks Abigail to inject Rick with a compound to erase his memories. Abigail complies and administers the shot, but Rick shakes his head, indicating he doesn't want to forget her. Abigail then leaves the cell, taking Dr. Freya with her. It's revealed that she gave Rick a different compound to help him escape. Rick kills the soldiers present there. His evolved abilities aid in his escape. Abigail and Freya go to save Lucas. Then, Rick reunites with his family in a lab, but is soon surrounded by soldiers. Abigail and Freya protect Rick from the soldiers. The professor orders the soldiers to kill the family, but they refuse and turn their guns on him instead. In the next scene, Abigail, Lucas, and Freya are in a jet with Rick inside a capsule, healing his injuries. A NASA official is present, and they're transporting Rick to Titan. Abigail agrees to let him go for the sake of humanity's survival. A few months later, Abigail and Freya have taken control of the lab. Lucas calls his mother outside to see the clear night sky. In a distant galaxy, we see Rick standing on the mountains of Titan. He has fully adapted to its environment, spreading his webbed arms and soaring through its sky. Check out another video popping up on your screen, or subscribe to stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks for joining. Take care.